So let's look at this picture for just a moment. We're asking the youth of our country to assume record levels of student debt, the highest in the land, tragically, in British Columbia. Go on to a job market where they're being paid lower than ever, never getting that stable income. Sorry, I move a lot when I talk. <laughs> that they will never have that stable family sustaining income because most likely they're going to get part-time or temporary work. And after they've worked through their entire career, uh, they will end with, uh, with a retirement that most probably will not come with a pension. We are fundamentally mortgaging the future of our nation's youth. And far from having unprecedented prosperity in this country, we've uh, actually seen that free trade comes at quite a cost to middle class and poor Canadians right across the country. Second myth that they put out is that free trade agreements are essential for increasing exports. Now the reality is quite the opposite. With every single bilateral free trade agreement that Canada has signed, our exports to those markets have gone down, not up. Cite one example, Costa Rica, where our exports to that market peaked the year before we signed and implemented a free trade agreement with Costa Rica, and ever since then have been below. In every single case, exports have gone down, not up, and though over time there have been some adjustments, what uh, we see from DFAT, the Department of Foreign Affairs and International Trade, is a convenient fiction. When they publish the trade statistics, they never do it in constant dollars, in real dollars. They always use current dollars, which is a convenient way of comparing apples to oranges. The reality is exports go down, not up, and where we haven't signed free trade agreements is where we've seen a significant increase in exports. <clears throat> Myth number three, free trade agreements that Canada signs are ideologically neutral. That everyone should support this free trade agenda because it's neither left nor right, it's, uh, it's neutral. Now, we know that we have a government that is ideologically extreme. We've seen that with the elimination of the long form census cutting fending for progressive organizations, massive and irresponsible corporate tax cuts, massive prison building for unreported crime. Yeah. Remember that comment from Stockwell Day? At a time when they have cut crime prevention programs. What is wrong with that picture? So what we have is essentially a ideologically driven right-wing government. And in each and every one of the free trade agreements that they put forward, there's not been a single progressive element brought forward. None of the examples like Mercosur in South America, where they have included a very comprehensive social program package in their trade agreements. In Europe, where there are a wide variety of progressive approaches on trade. Fundamental labor and environmental law and legislation, human rights legislation. A wide variety of progressive components in trade agreements there as well. In absolutely none of the trade agreements that this government has signed or the previous government have there been any of those progressive elements. So far from being uh, ideologically neutral, what we're seeing with these trade agreements is a very, very hard drive to the right. Now the fourth myth is uh, something you'll hear from the international trade minister often, that before each trade agreement the government evaluates the positives and the negatives and then makes a decision that based on what is best for Canada. The truth is, that is completely false. In none of the trade agreements that Canada signed had there even been a comprehensive impact study. Now, as far as CETA is concerned, the international trade ministers waived a study which talks about economic benefits to the country. And I've looked at the study. This is what it says. It, it presupposes that we will not lose one single job as a result of signing this agreement. Anywhere in the country! It doesn't take into consideration the impacts on our procurement programs, our health care costs, not a single thing. It's just rough and shallow and superficial cheerleading. In every single case, the government has done the same thing. Rather than doing a comprehensive impact study, rather than doing its homework, it simply signs and sort of devil the consequences. Well, what have been the results? A softwood lumber sellout that you, we all saw in British Columbia particularly has cost us so far $1.2 billion in penalties and fines and over 50,000 jobs. 
They didn't do an evaluation to determine what the impacts would have been of signing that agreement. And tens of thousands of British Columbia families and families right across this country have lost their breadwinner as a result of that. The shipbuilding sellout that was signed with uh, EFTA just uh, two years ago has led to a significant job loss in the shipbuilding sector. Again, no evaluation or impact study was ever done. And the Buy America deal that you heard about in January, who heard about that, uh, that deal that was signed? Yeah, we gave up access to $33 billion in procurement in Canada. We basically said American companies can come in and, and apply for those contracts. And in return, we were supposed to have access to the American market, uh, except that that never happened. Yeah, companies like Crew Company applied in the United States, and they said, no, we're not going to accept your application because, because we have a Buy America plan. And so Canadian companies can't apply. Now, on Thursday in Ottawa, the bureaucrats from Foreign Affairs and International Trade came forward and asked them the question, how many cases were Canadian families, were uh, Canadian companies actually excluded from Buy America contracts that they should have been able to bid up? And in how many cases did American companies get access to Canadian contracts? They had no idea. They said, we don't track that. They don't track that. But they're in the process right now of sitting down with the United States to negotiate the second phase of this Buy America deal. No evaluation on job loss. No evaluation on economic impacts. So the fourth myth, that this government knows what it's doing, that it does its homework, completely and absolutely false. This is a government that careens into trade agreements with absolutely no understanding of the consequences. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> that's true. That's the reality. So those are the four myths. Now let's turn now to what is in CETA. And uh, we're fortunate to know what is in CETA because at least one bureaucrat with a conscience has uh, on two occasions leaked the draft text on CETA, which is why in civil society within the NDP, the labor movement, we've been able to get those draft texts and actually surmise what is in this agreement.